Hi friends, welcome to Curious Vet channel. I am Dr. Mosina. The topic for today's video is a small but important topic that is Salter Harris classification of fractures. Salter Harris classification of fractures describe injuries involving the epiphyseal plate or growth plate of any bone. You will see what is growth plate later. Epiphyseal injuries are significant in patients who are still growing and significant complications such as disturbance of growth are avoided by recognition of such an injury to the epiphyseal plate. In 1963, Salter and Harris collaborated on the classification of fractures that affect the epiphyseal plate. The purpose of their classification system was to improve the medical practitioner's knowledge of the management for injuries to the epiphyseal plate and to avoid serious growth disturbances as a consequence of poor treatment. Before going to the classification, let's see the anatomy of a normal bone. Here you can see the spongy bone and compact bone. And the shaft of bone is called diaphysis. And the proximal and distal ends are called epiphysis. The diaphysis and epiphysis are connected by a portion called metaphysis. And between the epiphysis and metaphysis, there is growth plate or epiphyseal plate or physis. In this picture, it is more clear. You can see between the epiphysis and metaphysis, there is an epiphyseal line. So it represents the growth plate or epiphyseal plate or physis. All are synonyms for the same structure. And Salter Harris classification is dealing with the fracture of this epiphyseal plate. So coming to the classification, there are five types of fractures according to Salter Harris facial injuries. Then in type 1, there is separation through the physis or growth plate, usually through the areas of hypertrophic and degenerating cartilage cell columns. And in type 2, there is fracture through a portion of the physis that extends through the metaphysis. In type 3, there is fracture through a portion of the physis that extends through the epiphysis and into the joint. In type 4, there is fracture across the metaphysis, physis and epiphysis and in type 5, there is crush injury to the physis. In this picture, you can see the x-ray for the five types of Salter Harris fractures. In this picture also the fracture can be remembered clearly that is in first one there is separated growth plate and fracture above the growth plate in the second below the growth plate in third through the growth plate including metaphysis epiphysis and diaphysis sorry including metaphysis diaphysis and epiphysis in the fourth one and crush injury in the fifth one and here, this is the easiest way to remember the Salter Harris classification. You can see in this picture, the first picture shows the normal growth plate. And in type 1, there is fracture straight across the growth plate, above the growth plate in type 2, lower to the growth plate in type 3, through everything in type 4. And crush, that is, uh, you can see the second letter is R from the Salter. So you can remember from the letters of the word Salter. Here, epiphysis, physis and metaphysis is seen clearly and the fractures through the physis, through the physis and metaphysis, through the physis and epiphysis, through everything and crush injury. These are the pictures of different types of Salter Harris fractures in proximal tibia. The first picture is the normal x-ray. And the rest are different types from type 1 to type 5 of the proximal tibial fractures.
So in small animals in dogs and cats femur was the most bone most frequently affected around 46 to 5 percentage followed by humerus 19.8 percentage tibia 13.5 and followed by radius 11.8 percentage Also one important point to remember is that the distal growth plate was in all bones more often involved than the proximal growth plate and the involvement of distal growth plate was around 79 to 5 percentage compared to only 20.5 percentage of proximal growth plate affection Coming to the frequency of Salter Harris fractures, type one is the most common in dogs and cats, coming around thirty-nine point nine percentage, followed by type two around thirty-seven point eight percentage, type three is rare, that is only three point one percentage, and type four nineteen percentage. Type five is the rarest. In dogs, the most common facial fracture was the type four fracture. of the distal femur so type 4 fracture of the distal femur is the most common growth plate fracture in dogs further types of epiphyseal injuries have been subsequently added to the original description of salter and harris by mercer rang and j a oden and they added four more types to the original classification by salter and harris they are in type 4 there is epiphyseal plate injury there is injury to the periphery of the epiphyseal plate with resultant bridging of the bone and early closure of epiphyseal plate causing an angulation in type 6 sorry in type 7 there is epiphyseal injury localized to the epiphyseal plate type 8 epiphyseal injury localized to metaphysis and type 9 epiphyseal injury consisting of periosteal injury in these pictures along with the salter harris classification of five five fractures there is rang and orden addition to salter harris also you can see in type 6 trauma to perichondrium with tethering of growth plate and in type 7 trauma to the epiphysis fracture of metaphysis in type 8 and in in type 9 there is avulsion injury of periosteum but this addition to the original salter harris is not important as far as veterinary exams are concerned and we need to just remember this slide it is very clear from this picture that is the normal growth plate and in type 1 you can remember from each letter of the word salter type 1 remembered by letter s that is straight across type 2 a above the growth plate type 3 l lower to the growth plate type 4 through everything te and type 5 is crush the second letter of the word is r so that's all about salt harris fracture classification thanks for watching if you like the video like it comment and share it with your friends If you have not subscribed to uh, my channel please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you will get notified each time I upload a video I will be uploading at least one video every week so see you soon with another video thank you